One of the hottest ideas in data right now are CDPs, customer data platforms. They've been around for a few years now. They're much more mature. But in this video, I want to show you what they are, how they work, some of the most dominant players or popular players in the space, and how to think about choosing a CDP. I'll give you a few attributes or things to look for. So let's jump right in. Hi there, my name is Ruben and I'm a data strategist or a professional treasure hunter, helping companies find those hidden insights within their data. I've done this with about 70, 75 plus companies across five continents. And I'm still looking for that company in Antarctica, you know, to really fill out that continent list. But in this video, I wanna talk about CDPs. I've been working with CDPs and helping clients with CDPs now for five years, six years, and I've seen the space grow and change over time. So I'll give you a quick overview of where the space is right now and, you know, early 2021 when I'm recording this and some of the major things to look for when choosing a CDP. So fundamentally, think about a CDP as solving the problem of too much data. It's an ironic ending really when you think about it, but now the collection of data is so easy and there's so much data out there, companies naturally have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 sources of data, even a small company, even a company that's just you know, in a few million dollars in revenue. So a CDP came up and saying, you know what, you're gonna be pulling data from your website and your apps, software itself, from the cloud, from providers, from vendors. And a lot of it is very similar, almost identical. You wanna send that to multiple places. So not just a data warehouse or a data lake, but you wanna send that to your marketing communications tool, your CRM, your behavior analysis, and you know, 10 other ones. So they came up and say, we'll be the middle layer in between will be the abstraction layer. So you can have a single API, a single integration on your code. Collect the data and we'll send it over to 10, 20, 30 different locations or destinations if we start to use their language. So that's a problem. In hindsight, it seems like an obvious idea, but back then, you know, five, six years ago, it wasn't actually that obvious. It was just started. But now, five years later, six years later, it is incredibly common. And most companies and their stacks, when you look at their, their stack of technology, you're looking at five, 10, 15 different uh, software tools or data sources that need to play with each other, talk with each other. So when you look at the space, some of the most common players are tools like segment.com and particle meta router snowplow which plays a little bit in the open source space and of course the the managed cloud space uh, segment was bought by twilio recently so they're well funded i think we'll see cdps from salesforce and marketo if they haven't been released already so a lot of the big cloud players like google and so on are likely going to eventually get into the cdp game in some way shape or form and of course you see it even uh, within the bi tool itself where you might see semblances or, or, or small elements of CDPs. But this idea of a single unified customer data view or customer data platform to collect data is becoming quite popular and will continue on. So any of those players I think is quite useful, quite helpful, quite robust. But let me give you a few ideas on how to choose among the many CDPs and not just the four or five I listed, but probably the 10 or 15 that you're going to come across in your research efforts. So the number one thing I'm looking for when choosing a CDP for a client is is support for their code. Now, most CDPs will support very common things, web collection through JavaScript, mobile apps, iOS and Android, backend libraries like Ruby and Python, HTTP collection, perhaps is the most flexible option. But really where you wanna be interested is if you have any kind of framework that's new that may not be as well supported yet. You know, I had a client that they have React Native as their mobile app platform, and we ran into constant issues trying to get this integrated. You know, back then, this is maybe about a year and a half ago, it wasn't fully supported by everyone. The compatibility just wasn't the case and I, I seen this over and over again whenever I come across a company that has a framework that is somewhat new there's benefits to it but the integration with common software providers and CDPs may not be there so if you have anything new out there anything that could be considered new less than a few years old you really want to double check that integration otherwise you're gonna have a lot of issues if you have a very standard classic code base you know Python or C plus uh, native apps on mobile you're likely gonna be fine number two I want to see how 
integrates with data sources, not our code, but data sources. So you can look at your stack, whatever it's in there, Salesforce, MailChimp, Marketo, you have something like uh, like an Amplitude or Mixpanel, Hotjar, whatever it is in your stack, your marketing stack, sales stack, you then wanna make sure that you can support as many of those tools as possible out of the box. When it comes to data, anything can really be integrated and connected for the most part. You know, the benefit of a CDP is being able to quickly turn things on and off in just a matter of clicks, taps in some cases. And I have a client where this was the case, they implemented segment.com in their case, and they were able to just quickly turn on and turn off different integrations because it's all supported within the segment ecosystem. That is, the things they are using are supported by segment. So you wanna, again, do this as much as possible. Once again, for the most part, if you're sticking to the top players in any given space, you know, the, the top CRMs, the top email providers, you're likely gonna be fine. But again, once you go towards something more specific, then you wanna be careful. I had a client that had a CRM that in my opinion was not as well known. It was a little bit more obscure. They of course had clients and it worked well, but any integration with that CRM always was custom. There was never anything off the box that could be used. And that's just part of the course. So look at the software, how well it can integrate with the CDP you're looking at. And third will be pricing. A lot of the CDPs charge on monthly tracking users, the number of users that are going through the data, some do events, whatever the pricing is, you do want to run some projections here, not just your current level, what you'd be paying right now, but think about some projections in growth, six months, 12 months, 18 months, and perhaps even be aggressive in that just to see how pricing plays out. Many of my consumer clients tend to struggle a lot with paying for CDPs because the pricing goes up quite quickly. They might be starting at 20,000, 30,000 a year, but they could quickly be up there to 60, 90, 100, K as one of my clients on the financial space was when COVID-19 hit, their numbers skyrocketed. They were in the, the stock industry. So naturally, as the stock market went up, their user base went up. Right away, their CDP bill was doubling and tripling every couple months. And this can be significant. And this is really perhaps the most tricky hurdle to get over for companies, especially companies with a large volume of users, typically more on the consumer side. The pricing for a CDP can be quite high. And you might be thinking, I'm already paying the analytics tools themselves, right? The things I use for analysis, the things I use to store my CRM. Why should I pay for one? One more thing and one more layer. So always think of a pricing and be aggressive in that pricing just to understand what will happen if that bill is doubling and tripling. Are you still going to be able to make it work within your budget? And that's all I have for today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, like, share, anything you can do in the YouTube ecosystem. There's going to be a few links in the description. There's actually going to be a link to my first book. You can see here, Data Mirage. It is now out, available everywhere you can buy books. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Chapters in Canada, BAM. I I saw it on Google Play. Wherever you get your books, I think you'll find that if you enjoy any of this content, I appreciate if you can buy a copy, Kindle, digital, or physical, whatever makes sense for you. There's also gonna be a couple links there for my weekly newsletter, The Growth Needle, and Twitter. Just another two ways of getting similar ideas in different formats. Finally, in the comments below, let me know what's one thing that you learned from this video on CDPs or anything around this world. Until next time, talk soon.